In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating ur urinary catheter care with a male patient using a straight catheter. So to begin, you want to check the patient's plan of care for size and type of catheter, if this is a reinsertion, and you want to use the smallest size catheter if possible. Next, I'm going to perform hand hygiene and provide privacy by closing the door and or curtain. Next, I'm going to raise the bed to a an appropriate working height. If side rails are in use, I want to raise the side rail on opposite side of bed and lower side rail on my working side and place waterproof pad under the patient. At this point, I'm going to apply clean gloves. I'm going to clean the perineal area with soap and water, rinse and dry, and I'm going to use gloves to examine patient and identify urinary meatus. After that, I'm going to remove and discard my gloves and perform hand hygiene. Next, I'm going to position my patient. Since I'm working on a male patient, I'm going to position them supine with legs extended and thighs slightly abducted. After this, I'm going to drape my male patient and I'm going to drape him by covering his upper part of the body with a small sheet or towel and then I'm going to drape with a separate sheet or bath blanket so only perineum is exposed. After this, I'm going to position the light to illuminate genitals and open catheter catheterization kit. And at this point, I want to apply sterile gloves. And from this point on, I'm going to keep aseptic technique. So I'm going to clean the urethral meatus in a male, I'm going to retract the foreskin if he is uncircumcised and gently grasp the penis at its shaft. And I'm going to use circular strokes to clean beginning at meatus and working outward. I'm going to grab the shaft of his penis using my non-dominant hand, which is no longer sterile after this. I'm going to pick up and hold my catheter about 7.5 to 10 centimeters from catheter tip with my dominant hand that is still sterile. I'm gonna make sure the catheter is loosely coiled in the palm of my hand. If my catheter is not attached to a drainage bag, I wanna make sure to position urine tray so the end of catheter can be placed there once insertion begins. Next, I'm going to insert the catheter and explain to the patient that they may feel discomfort while catheter is being inserted. I'm going to encourage them to relax, take deep breaths, and I'm just going to let them know that it will be over before they know it. So for a male, I want to advance the catheter about 17 to 22.5 centimeters or until urine flows out of the end of catheter. Once the urine starts to flow out of the catheter, I'm going to stop advancing with the straight catheter. But if I were to use an indwelling catheter, I, was, I would advance it to bifurcation. At this point, I'm going to allow the bladder to empty fully and collect urine specimen if necessary. Then I'm going to secure my catheter, if it's an indwelling catheter, if it's a straight catheter, which I'm using in this video, when the urine stops flowing, I'm going to withdraw the catheter slowly and smoothly until removed. If the catheter were to stay on the patient, I'm going to clip drainage tubing to the edge of mattress and position drainage bag lower than bladder by attaching to bed frame. I would not attach it to the side rails of the bed and I wanna make sure that there is no obstruction of urine flow. Next, I'm going to provide hand hygiene as needed and help the patient back into a comfortable position. I'm going to dispose of my supplies measure the urine and record. After this, I'm going to remove gloves and perform hand hygiene again. In this video, I'm going to be discussing how to demonstrate a pre-packaged disposable enema. So 
Before we begin, we must understand what an enema is and why it's used. So an enema is the installation of a solution into the rectum and sigmoid colon to promote defecation by stimulating peristalsis. Typically, enemas treat constipation or empty the bowel before diagnostic procedures or certain types of abdominal surgery. So to begin... If an enema is medicated, it may not be delegated to the NAP. Check accuracy and completeness of each medication administration record with healthcare provider's written order. Check patient's name, the type of enema, and the time for the administration. Compare the medication administration record with label of enema solution. The order is the most reliable source and only legal record of drugs or procedure that patient is to receive. Next, you want to provide privacy by closing the door and or curtain in the patient's room, and this helps to minimize embarrassment. Next, you want to place a bedpan, a bedside commode, or make sure the toilet is in an easily accessible position. Next, perform hand hygiene. After that, you want to help the patient into a side-lying position with right knee flexed. This allows the enema solution to flow downward, thus improving retention of the solution. Once you position your patient, you want to apply clean gloves and place a waterproof pad under hips and buttocks. While doing this, expose only the rectal area. Next, you want to separate the buttocks and examine perianal region for abnormalities such as hemorrhoids, anal fissures, rectal prolapse. You want to do this because prolapse especially contradicts the, the enema. So the next step is to administer the enema. In this case, we're going to be doing a prepackaged disposable enema. So you want to remove the plastic cap from the tip of the container, apply water-soluble lubricant as needed. Next, gently separate the buttocks and ask patient to relax. Expel any air from enema container and insert lubricated tip into anal canal toward umbilicus. For an adult, you want to insert the lubricated tip approximately 7.5 to 10 centimeters. Next, roll the plastic bottle from bottom to tip until all of solution has entered rectum and colon. Instruct patient to retain solution until the urge to defecate occurs. This usually occurs within two to five minutes. Next, place layers of toilet tissue around the tube at anus and gently withdraw rectal tube and tip. Explain to the patient that abdominal cramping is normal and ask patient to retain fluid as long as possible until the urge to defecate occurs. Like I said before, it's usually two to five minutes. During this time, you want to stay at the patient's bedside. And it's important that you ask the patient to retain the fluid as long as possible because longer retention promotes stimulation of peristalsis and defecation. Next, discard the enema container and remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Help, pa- help the patient to bathroom if possible. If using bedpan, use clean gloves and help patient to as near as a normal position for evacuation as possible. In this case, squatting would be the best position for your patient. Next, you want to observe the character of the stool and solution and ask patient not to flush. You want to ask your patient not to flush because it determines if the enema was effective, so it's important that you observe that stool and the solution. Next, you want to help the patient as needed to wash anal area with warm soap and water. And if you are going to be helping your patient do this, make sure that you're wearing new new clean gloves. After that, you want to remove and discard your gloves and perform hand hygiene and help your your patient back into a comfortable position in their bed.